Namaskar and welcome to another nine o'clock live. Okay, now um, Israel attacked Iranian embassy in Damascus in Syria. Now, a lot of people say that Israel thought that uh, Iran may not react. Iran reacted. Iran reacted with over three hundred drones, over three hundred drones outside of uh, uh, Israeli airspace, but three hundred drones. Israel hasn't reacted. Matlab, Israel didn't attack uh, uh, Iran directly till now. That is the status. The whole world is wondering what is going to happen next. This happened with uh, the Hamas attack and then uh, the Gaza Strip and then now it is going from Lebanon to it is going from uh, 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 Gaza to Iran. We all thought, Are, Baba, is it going to spread all over Middle East? Is it going to be a uh, a massive war? What's going to happen in the Middle East? What is going to be the status from here on? So all these questions and let us uh, actually get some answers to this question. And I have with me seasoned diplomat. I have with me former uh, ambassador. And I have with me, actually, I don't need to introduce him to most of our, our audience because our audience knows him. I have uh, the ambassador, KP Fabian, uh, with me on my show. So let's get directly to Mr. Fabian and check with him as to what exactly does it hold now for the world? Is it going to take a, a, a more dangerous shape? Uh, is it going to harm uh, the, the, the world peace? What's going to happen next? Let's get right into the show. <music> Sir, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for joining me. It's such a pleasure talking to you. And uh, sir, what is going to happen to the world next? Uh, uh, Iran attacked. Uh, Israel hasn't. What next? Well, thank you. Uh, always a pleasure to be with you and uh, to be exchange uh, talking to your uh, thousands of uh, listeners. Thank you, now, sir. Coming to the question that you have raised, on the 1st of April, <clears throat> Israel attacked the Iranian embassy in Damascus and seven people were killed, including a senior commander of uh, uh, Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC. Iran went to the to the Security Council. Well, though Russia proposed a motion condemning uh, Israel, the Western powers, Washington, London, and uh, Paris stood in the way, and the Security Council did not do anything at all. And then. What did Iran do? It gave a warning, 72 hours of warning to America through the Swiss embassy, which looks after American interests in Tehran, and also through contacts in Oman. The intention was let Israel take all the precautions so that there will be no civilian casualties and the damage done will be minimized. That was the intention. Well, thanks to the warning given by Iran, President Biden cut short his stay in Delaware, rushed to the White House, the Pentagon arrange for bombers to fly from UK and USA to the area and Israel had enough time to keep in a state of alertness its famous Iron Dome and also what is called Arrow 3 which is a multi-layered defense system. 
And so Israel could say that uh, it had intercepted, quote, almost 99%, quote, of the incoming missiles and drones. A little girl was uh, injured, but otherwise <coughs> there was no civilian casualty. In other words, Iran took all the trouble to minimize, which is in some contrast with what Israel did. And of course, Israel went to the Security Council. Iran was condemned by the West, but Russia and China will not let the Security Council pass any resolution which is uh, uh, disfavorable to Iran. So that is where we are. Now the question is, uh, Biden immediately rang up Netanyahu after, you know, the, uh, after the Iranian attack on the 13th of April at 2.30 in the morning, eh, Israeli time. And expressed his uh, rock ironclad support for Israel. And that is what the readout from the White House said. But officials explained later that Biden has told Netanyahu not to hit back at Iran and that United States will play no part in that retaliation. So the Israeli cabinet met and they have passed on the decision to the so-called war cabinet, three members, Netanyahu, uh, Gaines and, uh, you know, Gallant, you know, that uh, very far-right uh, 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 defense minister who called uh, uh, the Palestinians subhumans, you know what I mean. So Correct. that is where it is. So there are many scenarios. One is that uh, Netanyahu will uh, tell Biden that he has withstood the tremendous pressure. Now give me something in compensation, you know. And he can later, you know, cause a situation and still strike at Iran, you know. The other is, he, Netanyahu strikes at Iran in a limited way and Iran strikes back in a more limited way and this tit for tat after a couple of rounds comes to a stop. But the third scenario is that Iran, Israel might attack Iran. Now, then the whole region will go up in flames. And uh, we don't know, it will be catastrophic for both Israel and Iran, for the region and for the rest of the world, including India. Now, the thing is this, uh, if uh, Israel tries to destroy the FORDO, F-O-R-D-O-W, uh, enrichment plant, you know, in Iran, which is about 80 to 90 meters under the rocks where Iran is conducting enrichment of uranium after, you know, when Trump walked out of the deal. And it is believed that uh, it has got uh, more than enough uranium uh, to make bombs. Now, Israel will not be able to, uh, on its own, destroy the Fordow plant. Well, if United States assists, that's a different story. So if Israel tries to destroy it, and if it's not destroyed, or even if it is destroyed, then Iran might take a decision to go nuclear. In which case, Saudi Arabia will follow. And the whole non-proliferation regime will crumble. You know? So there are many consequences if Israel hits hard at Iran. And Sir, as far as India is sorry. concerned, we have more than 8 million of our people there. Oil prices will go above the roof and you can imagine. Sir, why would uh, uh, 
Israel decide to strike now? Uh, I mean, isn't isn't it, it? Wouldn't that be the most illogical thing and the and a, and a, and, a, and an absolute diplomatic disaster for Israel? Well, the only reason why Netanyahu would take that course is because he is in serious danger. His popularity is coming down. And if tomorrow there were, if there is an election, he would lose it. And there are also corruption charges against him. So long as he is prime minister, these charges cannot be proceeded with. So it is in Netanyahu's personal interest to save his uh, political skin, to enlarge the war and to prolong it. And so there is a strong lobby in Israel which wants to hit back at Iran. Sir, uh, I can understand Lebanon. What? Why Iran? I can understand Syria. Why Iran? Why? Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Uh, why mess with Iran? Well, Iran dared to attack Israel proper. Who has attacked Iran, uh, Israel in in the last uh, so many decades? Nobody. I mean, Correct. what the Palestinians do is a different matter. They are there, hmm. you see. But no foreign power had dared to attack Israel for a long, long time. You have to go back to the last, uh, you know, 1973 war. Nobody has attacked it, Israel. Sir, uh, uh, Israel blames is uh, iran of siding with yemen and syria and uh, the country their name is uh, yemen syria and uh, 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 other countries i mean they they and, and lebanon my my apologies and uh, try and you know group this country and play mischief in in uh, in uh, israel if that is the case that is true then isn't in some way that it is justified that Israel is venting its anger in, in some form? I do not think so. I'll tell you why. You mentioned Yemen. Correct? Yes. Now, Yemen started interfering with the passage of ships. Hmm? Yes. When? Much after Israel started its genocidal war is not my adjective i mean it on palestinians in gaza israel has been killing them by bombing by starving by not uh, by denying them water medicine you know so that is why the houthis in Yemen started interfering with the passage of ships. Okay? And they have said that uh, if Israel stops, you know, the war, they will immediately stop doing this. And the United States had a big plan for protection shield and all that. Well, it has not worked. There have been at least 90 attacks on ships after the so-called protection shield was put there. Okay, so that is Yemen. Now, if you take uh, Lebanon, well, the Hezbollah there, they are fighting against it. They have been fighting against Israel for a long time. And in fact, way back, uh, uh, the Hezbollah was able to beat them back in Lebanon, long time ago. Now, Israel has been bombing southern Lebanon, you know, and uh, perhaps, you know, a huge number of uh, Israelis have left uh, northern Israel because of uh, uh, Hezbollah's uh, sending rockets and missiles and all that. And uh, also Israel has killed some of the Hezbollah commanders. So Israel actually provoked Hezbollah, and uh, also there are armed groups in Iraq who are sympathetic towards 
Iran, and they had attacked American bases sometime back, if you remember. Yes. Yeah. And Israel and Iran had hit back. Only thing is that again, Iran hit back after giving a warning to the United States, you know, so that uh, there was not much destruction and uh, nobody was hurt. Look at the way Iran conducts its military action and the way Israel conducts its military action. Correct. Sir, tell me, uh, uh, most importantly, uh, uh, now I'm asking you as a very, uh, uh, as a layman, sir, uh, so please forgive my ignorance, but is there a, is there a possibility that, you know, if uh, Israel attacks, uh, 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 you know, we all started with Palestine, now it has moved to Syria, it moved to, uh, it moved to uh, Iran, is there a possibility that if uh, uh, Israel attacks uh, uh, Iran, will there will this grow? Tomorrow Saudi Arabia coming in, day after tomorrow UAE coming in, day after that uh, uh, Sudan coming in. Is this going to grow? Uh, I do not know whether Saudi Arabia or any other Arab navies of uh, Iran will come to its rescue. Saudi Arabia will call for a ceasefire and all that. But I do not expect Saudi Arabia to get militarily engaged and uh, while Iran might not be able to uh, what shall I say attack Israel proper because in Israel has a strong air defense system and all that nor will Israel be able to send its uh, ground troops to Iran and make them surrender so it will be air attacks well you know that uh, the United States bombed Vietnam to smithereens. Then what happened? Correct. If you remember, the American ambassador had to leave in a helicopter from Saigon, clutching on to the embassy flag, which he had, you know, taken, removed. So, you know, it's an asymmetrical thing. You know, it doesn't follow that uh, Iran will sort of surrender and ask for, uh, you know, for young no, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't. So it will be sort of, you know, more of bombing and bombing. And uh, at some point, uh, you know, uh, Israel will have to stop it. Sir, uh, uh, Iran is a common enemy both to Israel and to United States, uh, isn't, uh, isn't it? Uh, United States is not very... Very friendly, not friendly. They're they're not at all friendly with Iran. Will United States take this as an opportunity to pile on to uh, Iran? Will that be a possibility? Well, let me put it this way: I was in Iran when the revolution took place, and when the American embassy was, you know, diplomats were taken as hostages. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Nineteen seventy-nine. Now. What happened is that uh, some young men did it. It was not that Ayatollah uh, Khomeini had sent them to do it. It is not that the government of Iran had asked them to do it. You know, in that chaotic situation, they did that. And uh, it would have been possible for uh, United States to negotiate with Iran and get their release. In fact, let me explain to you how it happened. You see, after the Iranian revolution, Washington sent word that, listen, there is uh, no conflict of interest between Iran and the United States. And uh, the CIA chief went to Algeria when Algeria was celebrating its uh, anniversary of independence and all that. Why? Because the Iranian prime minister was coming there. So the CIA chief called on the Iranian prime minister and told him, listen, there is uh, no clash of interest between us, between Washington and Tehran. And we have a common interest in, uh, you know, resisting Soviet aggression. 
And the Iranian Prime Minister said, yes, of course, we can work together. Then, over the radio, the Iranians heard that Carter had decided to give asylum to the Shahin Shah. You know? And okay. then the Prime Minister said, no, give us our Shah back. Give us our Shah back. And the conversation ended. And within 48 hours, that Prime Minister was fell. And there was chaos and the embassy was taken over. You know? And Washington did not, I repeat, did not bother to tell the Iranian government, which is another Iranian government, came, listen, let us sit down and talk and you should release our, you know, didn't do that. Carter sent a mission which was an absolute disaster. The aircraft, uh, I'm sorry, the helicopter, uh, you know, crashed and all that, you know. But then, you see, Iran, in order to give it to Carter, told Reagan, we are going to release it, release the hostages. And when they release the hostages, uh, Washington should have uh, uh, lifted the sanctions. They didn't do that. So American policy towards Iran has been a study in uh, failure. Se uh, deliberately chosen failure. And Sir, uh, let me, sorry. Yeah, Trump, sorry. Well, Trump walked out of a deal. You remember? In 2018. Yes. yes. And Biden, who had as candidate, said that he would resume the deal. Once he got elected, he changed his mind. Why? And his uh, Secretary of State designate Blinken for his ratification, when asked a question about uh, the nuclear deal, he repeated exactly the same words verbatim of what Trump had been saying. Correct. Sir, let, let, let me ask you this question. Uh, has America ever been fair or why America, West and America, have, have they ever been fair to the Middle East or the Middle Eastern problem? Well, uh, when the Shine Show was there, there were good relations between United States and Iran. In fact, during my time, there was even a, an Israeli, not exactly an embassy, but an Israeli office, you know, in, in Iran. Iran. In, in Iran, you see. Of course, Shainsha was, a, what shall I say, the inspector of police appointed by Washington. And at that time, there was no Shia-Sunni rivalry and all that. You know, there was no conflict between Saudi Arabia and Iran. And as you know, the latest is that China was smart enough to arrange for a reconciliation. Sir, so, uh, uh, what should India stand be? India should be neutral. India should stand by our friend uh, Israel. India should stand by uh, 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 Iran. What what should India stand be? No. Our external peace ministry has come out with a very good statement, urging restraint. You know, which means address to Israel, because it is Israel which says that it is going to retaliate, you know, and that what is required is a diplomatic resolution of matters in dispute. That's a good statement. And I'm glad that uh, there was no tweet from the PMO. You remember what happened? 7th of October? There yes. was a tweet which was put out without consulting MEA, but MEA started correcting that, though it took them a little time. Correct. So many days. So many days. Correct. So, uh, <laughs> I want to ask you a very uh, weird question. Uh, so, will uh, the Prime Minister of India's call will now make a difference in the war? Will they stop uh, bombing or something? Is that possible? Like what happened we saw in Ukraine and uh, 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 Russia? Something of that sort uh, in the no, there, no, no. There, I mean, the Indian students were able to get back in safety because of uh, uh, Prime Minister's intervention. But as regards this war, or rather this tension between Iran and uh, Israel, 
I do not think India can play any important role because don't forget Iran is in contact with the United States. You know, yes. and yes. Uh, so if Iran wants to convey anything to Israel, it can be conveyed. Sir, I want to ask you this question as a as a seasoned diplomat. Sir, tell me, Israel is a friendly country. Israel has been helping India not once but many a times. Whenever India needed help, Israel has been there for India. Okay, somewhere down the line, we have uh, a lot of Muslims in India. So, uh, and we have a certain amount of uh, uh, sense of judgment, sense of fairness uh, you know, when it comes to Palestine. So, uh, what exactly would be India's stance in case of a conflict, a real conflict is what I mean. No, India certainly will not uh, side with either party. India's uh, principal concern will be the safety of uh, the Indian community in that region, okay. you know, and India's principal concern also will be with oil price and the dislocation of trade, you know, flights and all that. India is not going to side uh, that is send uh, uh, weapons uh, to Israel or to Iran. No, India will urge both of them to stop it. So, and, and, and that should be the, the stance? Uh, at no point should we be ever taking sides of, uh, of uh, anybody? Is that what no, you're saying? It, no, it will, it will be wrong and India will not do that because, uh, you know, we have to look after our own interests. Correct. Sir, you know, you were the first to talk about, uh, if you remember, Qatar. We had uh, a discussion the very day when uh, their death sentence was announced, our sailors' death sentence was announced, and you were the first person to say that nothing nothing of this sort will happen. We have a treaty and they will be brought back to India and they will be put in Indian prisons. That is the treaty that we have signed with Qatar. You were the first person to say that. Sir, tell me, tell me what happens to those Israeli, those uh, 17 crewmen in that Israeli ship. 17 out of the 25 crewmen uh, in the Israeli ship are Indians. What happens to them now? How does this diplomacy work here? Yeah. Now, before that, uh, you know, out of the our Navy personnel, retired ones, uh, the leader, yes, he has not yet still... come back. You know what I mean? Yes, so I know. The pardon that was given to him had conditions. You know, pardon from death sentence, it had conditions. And uh, I don't think... Uh, uh, MEA has uh, told us much about it. So that is one. Secondly, as regards the Indian crew, 17 of them, our foreign minister spoke and they are, uh, our uh, embassy is getting access. You know, which is important. So, so Iran won't, will, will definitely not no, arm our no, I think uh, our crew members are safe. Nothing will happen. Absolutely. Sir, uh, my, my, my last question to you. Sir, uh, tell me, in, in, a, in a situation like this, uh, what is the United Nations role? Actually, let me ask you another very basic question. Does the United Nations play any role in, in, in global conflict nowadays or they are just either mute spectators or they look up to uh, United States to uh, sort matters out. What exactly is the United Nations role? Okay, the answer to that is that United Nations per se is not an independent actor in the international realm. It is a forum where member states can meet, discuss things and pass resolutions. You know, it provides you a forum for resolving your disputes diplomatically, negotiations, arbitration, and this and that. Now, if that forum is not working, the fourth is not that of the forum. The fourth is that of the member states who do not use make best use of the forum. And the fault lies essentially with the the P5, the permanent five, who President Roosevelt thought would be the policeman who would keep law and order in the global village. 
Now, far from keeping law and order, these five policemen have started wars, have taken sides, and you know they have not discharged their responsibilities. So the fourth is theirs, not that of the Security Council or of the UN. Sir, uh, I want to sorry, I said I, that my last question, but I will ask. I want to ask you one more question, sir. Uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party has put up in their manifesto that uh, they will try and get us uh, into the Security Council. We will be, we'll be inducted. They will try. They will endeavor to induct in the, into the Security Council. Sir, is that possible? Is there a scope? Can uh, a party uh, do that? Is that possible? I'll put it this way. First of all, India qualifies eminently for a permanent seat in the Security Council. But I do not think India has been going about it in the right way. Let me explain. You know of the G4? India, yes. Brazil, yes. Germany and Japan. Now just have a thought experiment. Suppose all the four are in. Then how many from Western Europe please? France, UK and Germany. Yes. Yes. Does it make any sense? Yes. No. And do you think China will agree to Japan? No. And even for Brazil, there will be, you know, rivalry from Mexico and Argentina and all that. And also the G4 doesn't have anyone from Africa. You know what happened? The G5 met, including Africa, way back uh, during the General Assembly session, and it was decided that the next day there will be a press announcement about the G5. Well, everybody was waiting for the African representative, meaning African president. Then the phone call came. Sorry, we can't make it because unless the OEAU, Organization of African Unity, passes a resolution, we cannot project ourselves as a candidate. So that became G4. Now, I think what mm -hmm. India should have done, instead of projecting India, Japan, Brazil, and Germany, and all that, India should have said, listen, there is need to restructure Security Council. The number of permanent members should be raised from 5 to, say, 10 or 12. Let the General Assembly decide. And then let the General Assembly decide who should be in. You know, we are not putting our own candidature. Let the General Assembly decide. And I tell you, India has such goodwill in the General Assembly that India would have got the you know, highest score. You know, and once the General Assembly sends uh, such a resolution without you know mentioning anyone in particular, the P5 will find it very difficult to veto it. Correct. You know? Correct. So correct, correct. Little, little subtlety is required in these matters. Not Correct. over projection. This time around, I guess uh, uh, Bharatiya Janata Party believes they have that subtlety and the uh, idea. So I guess they, uh, but that will be a big uh, win for India, wouldn't it be, sir? I said it will, but I don't think it, the P5 will agree. <laughs> sir, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time and such a pleasure talking to you always, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.